Welcome to another edition of Southern Country. Hi, I'm Herb Southern. Welcome to the show, my friends. Today, I'm very lucky to have Wildcat recording artist Joni Harms. Hello. Welcome to the show. It's great to be here, my friend. Good to see you again. You bet you too. All right, Wildcatter, for a second, you're the you're the flagship art, uh, artist off that label. I am. There? It's a brand new label out of Graham, Texas, okay. and uh, I've recorded an album for them called Let's Put the Western Back in the Country. Absolutely. There's also been signed uh, David Ball and Red Steagall okay. now have got albums out, but uh, but I was the, the, the first one, yeah. Everybody can be after. That first is always makes a difference. Second <laughs> is, third, fourth, they're all the same after that. Am I right? <laughs> I don't know. Let's talk about, uh, let's put some uh, Western back in the country. I read where it's a contemporary Western album. Is that a good description? That of it? is. It's, um, you know, I love traditional country music. It doesn't have to be a cowboy song, every single okay. song. I just like the steel guitars, the twin fiddles, uh, the music that, that makes it country, in my opinion. And so I try real hard to keep that a big part of what my music is. I also also come from a ranch though yes, heard and so you know uh, singing about cowboys and western lifestyle and rodeo and all that is is something that comes real natural so yeah I think uh, that's a real good description contemporary western you betcha let's talk about some of the songs I've got a feeling for you it's a country swinger yeah it yeah. is they've got you know a variety of music on there there's there's things that I would say are more court country oriented and then there's some things that are really have a western flavor but but um, it's a it's a album that I think flows real good. Got a little something on it for everybody, I hope. How about Murphy's Law? So I heard where I read where it's a play on words. Is that true? <laughs> it is. It, it is very much so. It's a story about a policeman named oh, Murphy, okay. and uh, so he pulls me over and and uh, we fall in love and and uh, so. Murphy's Law ends up working out to be pretty good anyway, after all. How about Coyote Cafe? Is a Love Gone Wrong song? That's a completely fictitious song, but you know, I've always been a fan of Marty Robbins and, and some of that kind of um, Arizona type sounds of music. Sure. I, I love that. And, and uh, so that song was just kind of meant to be uh, that kind of a brand of a song, you know, and it's, it turned out real pretty, I think. Cowboy Up is a Western philosophy type of song? Yeah, that's been a term that I've known for a long time. Everybody it, knows Cowboy Up. you got to get back on and ride again, yeah. yeah. And I was lucky enough that uh, Chris Ledoux recorded that on his last album before he passed away, that too. And it was, him. oh, such a loss. But, um, but yeah, and that was even a single for him, so it got quite a bit of radio airplay. And, and uh, I put it on my latest album, though, as well. Yeah. You put a Cajun barn burner on called Louisiana Hot Sauce, huh? <laughs> That's a good song, huh? But, yeah, yeah, it's it's yeah. a lot of fun. It's a real dance type oriented yeah. song. Lots of good, good picking and the musicians we were able to use on the album are the best. They play on uh, George Strait's music, Alan okay. Jackson, everybody's. So we got some great players. Instrumentation on that album. Was it a common thread between all the instruments playing on that album? You had basically the same players on all the songs, the same instruments, twin you know, fiddles and all. Pretty much when you go in and do an album in Nashville. That's that's the thing you do. You bring in those wonderful session players, Go ahead, you have something. Go ahead, keep and uh, they they are just unbelievable musicians. Yeah, they that. really are. And they go in and they record the tracks in one day, usually one or two days. And then what I, what the artist does is just called scratch vocals. Okay. And then later on, the artist comes back in and uh, records. Takes as long as they need to to do their vocals. But yeah, the musicians for, uh, you just use session players from Nashville, and they come in and they do pretty much the whole album in a couple days. The 13 songs on this album. Let's put the uh, Western back in the country. Family and home, enduring love, hard work, and good clean fun. Did that sum up the? Uh... I like that. Yeah. 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 I think so. Up, huh? Yeah, and 13 is my lucky number. So. All right, there you go. <laughs> Oh, yeah, you're right. I didn't realize that. 13, 13 yeah. yeah. She's got 13 That's all over That's one of my her. brands, Lucky yeah, 13. Put that up there. Let Leo see if we can get a shot of that. There we go, 13. Yeah, how about that? So my daughter, Olivia, was born on June 13th in room 13 at 113, no. which would be 1313. Yeah. 13, 13. Yeah. So, yeah. Hey, I read that uh, Joni Harms turns images of the West around with humor, insight, and grace. Is that a do you think that's pretty true? I think that's Not a nice compliment. Back, you know? I, I, I would take that as a very nice compliment. I would okay. I would strive to do that, you bet. Okay. How has your music changed since the beginning of your singing career? How old you when you first sang your first song? Oh, I've just had so much fun. It's been a wonderful ride, met so many people. I think I think I've grown as a songwriter and certainly as an entertainer. I mean, I've always loved to get up and perform for people, but there's a song I wrote called I Want to Sing for You, and it's on my After All album, which was a couple ago. And it really just kind of says how much I love getting out and traveling around and performing for people. And so I think 
you know, anybody that does something a long time and practices and practices certainly gets better, and that's what I'd like to hope that I've been able to do too. But as far as my values and the things that I love to sing about, I don't really think that's changed much at all. Your first song you ever wrote? It was about my horse. Okay, there you go. <laughs> How old were you when he wrote that song? Probably about six years old, six seven years, years old. old, right Did in there. Did that song in any album today? No. Well, can, you, no. Can, you, can, you, can you sing a bar for us here? <laughs> I don't think, <laughs> you, you'd don't wanna, I don't think you'd want to hear oh, okay. it. Okay. <laughs> but I, you know, hopefully we've gotten better since then. Uh, but yeah, I wrote some about Mustangs, and, and then I started singing some in church, and I went sure. about my dad for Father's Day. Sure. And so, yeah, I just, and then learning to co write was another thing that happened from the days when Jimmy Bowen signed me to sure. Universal Records and then that involved into Capitol and that was quite a new thing for me to to share my thoughts with people I yeah. really had never known or yeah. before and but I'll tell you something it's it's really two heads are better than one a lot of times True, and you huh? can get a get a better song and now I I write down my ideas and I still write some by myself but I look forward to going to Nashville a couple times at least a year just to get with other yeah. writers there and yeah. and and write songs for a week or two yeah, isn't that interesting? yeah hey oregon is home a ranch that has been in your family for over a century going back to the 18 17 1880s tell me how that ranch life reflects your music oh it's all over it's all over the music it's all over everything it. you sing is ranch huh well no i no. wouldn't say that but but i mean the way i sing it i okay. mean i could sing a rock and roll song and it'd probably still come out country because I'm singing it okay. and that reflects my background of growing up on a ranch I think but but as far as uh, a lot of songs are inspired from there um, you know because it's just fun to write about the background and the things that I know and that's that's what I know do you have to live it to write it to sing it no 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 okay. I, I mean I, I, pref I mean, you, it's fun to write a song because I can get into the songs I write. Right, I sure. think even more than cover songs. I love to, to yeah. just record the best songs available to me. So I'm happy to, to look at as many outside material songs that come in as I can, but I still love to write my own. And, um, but if I can really relate to the song, yeah. I think to, to record it, I have to be able to feel it. Right. I wouldn't feel good about recording something that I didn't really believe or, or feel good about saying. But if, but if it hits me in the right spot, certainly I'll record somebody else's material. Does it take a special type of songwriter to write Western music? Well, I think you do need to know something about it. I, you can't really look the part or write the material or really for that matter sing the western music unless you've at least had the opportunity to experience it to some degree i'm okay. not saying you've had to live on a ranch all your life all right. but i think that it's 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 a very different i think a lot of people still look up to the cowboy and cowgirl sure. and uh, roy and dale yeah, and say course. you know that was a, a kind of a um image to wholesome for yeah, sure. for families to to have as a role model and uh, a lot of people I still think like to go out and pretend they're cowboys for a day or two, you know, and, and that's why Western music maybe is still popular. But to really be able to get through to them, I think the more you do know about it and live it to some degree, it's going to shine through. Has Western music changed since the days of the Sons of the Pioneers? Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, that's still a lot of people still out there recording their music and doing it well, and, I, and I'm proud to see that. But I also think that you can't just stay idle on that. That's okay. got, you've got to move forward and make some new Western music as well. True. I think that's what everything. Every yeah, kind of music. Yeah. Look where bluegrass is going. Look where country's going. You know? Just just take that and grow from it. Keep hold on to it. You know, right. don't lose it. But but just also Expand add more. Exactly. There you go. Quote. Harm's vocal prowess on display throughout. This is your new album. Susie Boggess is an obvious reference vocally as well as Lori Morgan. It even threw Patsy Cline in there. Is that true? You kind of, that's what somebody wrote in one of the articles I read. That, I that think that's, yeah, I'll yeah, take those definitely as compliments. I, my first, and the, the people that influenced me the most were probably Dolly Parton, Emmy Lou Harris, uh, you know, I love the way Dolly wrote, like, Put oh, Many yeah. Colors is oh, still one of my yeah. favorite songs. I've Amy played. Lou Harris, I love the way she presented herself. Um, so those were, you know, probably bigger role models, but those are all, I mean, Susie Boggess is great. Right. She's a good friend of mine. Is she? And uh, just a delightful gal. So all people that I admire, for sure. Is there anybody out there, we are just talking about moving on, progressing and everything. Is there anybody out there pushing the envelope as far as Western music is concerned to a new level, like they did with country, as like country's going to rock and roll today, where where's where's Western music? What do you think the next step for Western music is? Well, have they push that envelope. Interestingly enough, Herb, that's what I'm really trying to do, and I think we're okay. trying to get some other people to follow along with me, in that. Um, 
the contemporary western right. i guess is basically what that would be right as opposed uh, to traditional yeah it would be something that can work more at different radio stations sure. and and hopefully appeal to a broader audience not just you know cowboy folks or people um that is should never go away like right. i said the cowboy music and the sons of the pioneers and roy and dale and 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 gene autry and all those wonderful artists should live on forever yeah. absolutely but i think since we are in in the where we are in the world today, I think new Western music that, that could have wholesome messages and still the cowboy way uh, coming through on it would just be awesome. And I hope we can do that. I read, I said, you never crossed over in a pop country in all your songs. You just stay pretty much traditional country, traditional Western. Not pop country, that's no, right. right. I, traditional country. country or, you know, things right. that could work, I think, right. on country radio stations. But pop country just wouldn't be me and I wouldn't do that to my listeners and fans. You record an album in Nashville. Why did you, uh, why did you go to Nashville, and where did you record your past albums? Other than musicians, you went to Nashville, obviously you said for the musicians. There. Not necessarily no, for the okay. musicians only. Okay. Um, when I first started out in Oregon, I mean, I made a couple of albums on my own out there, oh, okay. and then. But I really always was told that the place to go get a, a record deal was Nashville, Tennessee, and mm -hmm. I still believe that's to some degree so. I went back there and met Byron Gallimore, who produces people like Tim McGraw and, and okay. Jody Messina and people like that now. He was just a session player working for Charlie Pride at the time. Wow. Yeah. Um, and went in the studio and cut four sides with him. And then that's, that four song demo was shopped to other labels and yeah. Jimmy Bowen was the legend. You know, oh, re, he made George Strait, Reba McIntyre. Basically said, I think I'd like to meet this girl, and so I was flown into Nashville and met with him, and that's how I got my first record deal yeah. and began recording there and meeting other co-writers, meeting um, other studio players, all that, and so it's it's really just been where I've done it ever since. Okay. I, I don't believe it's the only place. I mean, I know R.W. for instance records in Texas and. Mm -hmm. And there's certainly great studios all over right. the place now. But for as many years as I've been going back and forth to Nashville, it just makes sense to not change now. And, and I still believe it's Music City. No, I believe that's a, where the cream of the crop is. A lot of stars come out of Nashville. Absolutely. Nashville made a lot of entertainers. That's right. When you write a Western song, what is the main subject ingredients to that as opposed to country? You know, the old saying is, I lost my horse, got a drink, blah, 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 you know, all that for the old. Then you play it backward and you get everything back, you know, the old saying. What is the main subject for uh, Western music, campfires? And I don't think it has to have a just a subject. Okay. Western music covers a lot of things. We've got Western states. I mean, we have, you know, and I don't think all old country music was, there certainly was, you know, the Hank Williams type mm, stuff. Course. But that's what is so refreshing, I think, anymore about today's country music and western music if you will is that there is a little something for everybody there's things that lean more towards bluegrass there's things that lean more towards folk there's things right. that are definitely pop country yeah. then and we just want to have our little spot for traditional um you know or, or the contemporary western that and western you know the older stuff too but i i think with with today's technology there's there's no reason that, that there can't be room for everybody do you think now going back to the old days I talked to Lester Fla um, I talked talk to Earl Scruggs and I talked to uh, Ralph Stanley and they refer bluegrass as country music uh, Earl says me and Lester played country music you know today it's known as bluegrass they lived on the same charts now do you think Western of course in the old days Western lived on the same charts do you think it can happen again where everything just gels together you think it could be a separate chart for every genre nobody'd be happier than I would if that could happen but whether it's the reality of it all I really don't know um, if not though maybe what we need to do is is make some sort of a split and have two country stations one that would be contem you know like country pop yes. and one that's more traditional and, and contemporary western and have two different kinds of stations for so that people can listen to both whichever one they want or go back and forth right. to whatever they want but whether those will actually gel together to me it would make a wonderful radio station to have more variety you know totally. have a little of everything rather than just the top 20 songs over and over and over I agree. but um, whether it'll happen I don't know I don't know either I'd like to see it happen you were mainstream country artist years ago 
not that many years ago. <laughs> well, I didn't put a number on it. <laughs> Tell me about those days. Okay, you bet in the early 90s, we'll just say that. I was in I, Nashville in the early 90s, yeah. going to all the shows. Yeah. Um, I had a song called I Need a Wife that actually was uh, 24, I think, on the Billboard charts. Okay. Someone called Bluer Than His Eyes that we'd had a video out on on CMT. And uh, that was in the 20s as well. And we won't go into the long story because no, I feel like, you know, everything that's happened has been for the right reason in my life. I believe that everything, you know, is that yeah, happens for a reason. Yeah. But but um, that was on Universal Records and that label dissolved yeah. and I was moved over to Capitol Records and things just never worked out yeah. there, really there. A few years down the road from that, I was uh, signed to Warner Brothers Records and did a album that I had a lot more freedom to be who I was, right. which was more traditional. And we did that Cowgirl Dreams album. And have, you know, I've really been able to, to have a lot of special deals and do a lot of things. Yeah. And, and I don't feel um, bad about my career at all. Because the main thing that, that's so, that I can always say is I've never done anything I didn't want to do on a, on a record. I've always felt good about the material that I, and that's the most important thing to me, not not being a huge star, but, but doing music that when I lay down at night, I can say I did something good, and maybe if I touched one or two people today with a song of mine, then matter. I did something good. Awards, WMA, uh, music, Western Music Association, uh, 2003 Female Vocals of the Year, Song of the Year, mm -hmm. and Academy of Western Arts, uh, Entertainer, Entertainer of, the of the Year. year. There it is. We got Album of the Year at the WMA last year, too, with, with Let's Put the Western Back in the Country. Okay. So that album that came right out of the shoot and got Album of the Year. So we were pretty tickled about that. Will Rogers Award. Yeah. Album I've of the year. luckily been able to be, you know, it's, that's just, awards are something that I think, you, you know, for me, any time that I get one, it's just a nice pat on the back yeah, type thing because right. I am kind of blazing my own trail if you will sure. all of us western no, artists are and so to to have somebody say we we approve and like what you're doing that's just really really nice treat Joni's bronze yeah yeah I mean it, it, life is fun in, in this business I'll tell you I never never know what's around the next bend but uh, I ran into a wonderful gentleman by the name of John Geis, and he asked me if he could uh, do a bronze of me. He's done several other yeah. Western acts and country acts, and I said I'd be honored, and so uh, he did, and I think he did an outstanding job. I've got a picture of it on no, our website, uh, and certainly uh, one of them in my home that he gave me. So, so uh, very, very where's, special thing. Where is Western music the best received, in this country or abroad? You know, You're going to Herb, UK. Herb, that's really tough. Um, I, I am going to the UK, and I've traveled a lot. I've been in Spain and Norway and the UK a few mm. times, and all, um, many different different parts of the country. And they love Western music over there. I think they have great mm. taste in music, actually. Yeah. But that doesn't mean that that there aren't people here that still just really love and appreciate it too. I just am trying to um, get it around the world wherever people want to have it because there isn't as much of it right now as there right. used to be. In fact, we're even going into Australia and France well, again this year and, and uh, just really a busy year. Boy, I'll tell you, you're gone. Huh? Yeah. How many dates a year do you play? Probably, by, oh, I'd say between 125 and 150. Uh, busy. Yeah. yeah. You don't get to see home too often. No, I try to take the kids with yeah. me quite a sure. bit, and, and they're both becoming little singers oh, too. Oh so boy, there you go. Fun. They're backing you up. We'll be singing harmony with you. Well, maybe or I'll sing them behind them. You never well, know. They never know. You're right. <laughs> Grand Ole Opry. You sang on Opry. How many times? You must have been there quite a few times. Mm, I'd have to say pushing on a couple dozen. Okay. No, I mean that's what a great honor oh, that is. God. Every single time, and had the chance to do the Ryman for the first time I was this just last fall. Up with that. And uh, you know, just just a place that opens their arms up to the kind of music that I still am trying to preserve and do. And gotten to be friends with a lot of the folks there at the Opry that are regulars and, and little Jimmy Dickens and great and, guy. And, oh, just, oh, you know, I love him. I'm on the show oh, already. Oh, he was so good. Yeah, lots of fun. It's just that's that's one of the goals that I had since a little girl. And so I mean, gosh, I don't know if it'll ever get much better than that. And we just want to make mention we mentioned before the show Carnegie Hall. I saw you there. That's, yes, you did. That's great. That's unbelievable. But how do you get to Carnegie Hall? Practice is the old saying. <laughs> that's well. right. Well, and then and uh, then it was just a wonderful a treat great. to have a, a bunch of Western artists have the opportunity to play there. And really, um, Mr. Es Etheridge with yeah. uh, what Prairie Rose um, yeah. was the one that really put that yeah. together. And sure uh, was, it was a great show. What famous people have you shared the stage with? 
I've had the opportunity to, to be with a lot of really good people. Um, one of my favorites and idols was when I was touring New Norway two years ago was, was Mr. Don Williams. Wow. Love, love the touring with John. him. Yeah. Merle Haggard, oh. um, Emmy Lou. I've had a chance to do yeah. some things with when that was great. a great honor. I haven't got great. to meet and do anything with Dolly yet, but okay. I'd sure love to. Oh, my God. Yes. Um, but, gosh, I, I, the two, too numerous to mention. George oh, Trey. Oh, wow, yeah. Um, you know, just the list goes on and on. It, various things, because I've, I've done everything from rodeos to fairs to conventions to corporate things. To charities. Do you work for charities? Do you think for charities? Yeah, anytime I can. I mean, children's things yeah. are certainly a soft spot with me, and I've done a lot of that. And then um, cancer. Now I've yeah, had cancer. Right. lost my mom to cancer oh, in December. Okay. Um, and, well, actually, the many, many complications, right, but that sure. was one of them. Okay. And um, Dad has still some, and so I, I, I really that. Diabetes, my mom had that. Right, yeah. So, yeah, I, I'm, I'm anxious to help in any ways that I can on, on as many things as I can on that. You lend yourself out. Absolutely. Website before we close up. www.joniharms.com and www.wildcatterrecords.com. Uh, I was on both sites, and you, did, you have a great site. I... Uh, Got a lot of this information off the site, and uh, I want to thank you. We're going to close up with uh, another one of your songs here. Oh, good. But I want to thank you for being on the oh, show. Oh, it was it's a, a pleasure. pleasure. Thank pleasure you very to much. Joni. Good to see you again. Let's wrap up this edition with Joni Harms. Mm -hmm.